right, we're going to replace reality. So to get started, just open up Polycam on iOS 16 with a LiDAR device. Make sure you have LiDAR. Go room and simply go start. Follow the instructions. It's very fast and easy to do. If you have any challenges or uh, shut the blinds because something like can affect this. And once you're done, just go stop and you'll have the room plan. Then all you have to do is go export and just export as a GLTF. All right, now you've got the model. What you want to do is go to studio.worldcast.io and you're going to select showcast. I'm just going to put my uh, screen in full screen now. So I'm going to go showcast. You want to type in room replacement. So you can name it whatever you want. Just to, this makes it easier to find with your other cast down the road. Uh, and then so I'm going to put the size of my cast. So from my floor to my ceiling, eight feet from the floor to the ceiling. So I'm going to go eight. So I'm going to pick feet. Go create. So we're here with our blank canvas. So you can either drag and drop the model or browse to where it is on your computer. So in this case, I'm going to go 3D object. I'm going to go select file. I'm just going to grab the uh, file and we'll call this room scan. You don't have to give it a title if you don't want to, but it helps for finding out your assets later on. So let's just go upload the 3D object. And there's my room scan. Okay. So now as the fun part starts. So right off the bat, it's got its own ground plane. I don't want that because I want to replace it easy with our system. So I'm going to go edit model. And I'm simply going to grab that ground plane and see it's highlighted. I'm just going to go delete. There's the rest of the objects here. Now this is where you can go into the system and actually change the colors of the objects as well. You select the item that you want, go material, and then you can change the color here. So if you, if you know your, uh, color that you may want. We're going to be, we're going to add textures soon enough in the system as well. So you can add the textures. Uh, if the model, the model doesn't come in UV mapped at the moment. So uh, we're working on that. So we're, let's just pick a kind of a world cast uh, blue. And that looks good enough. And we'll make sure transparent's off. Okay. Otherwise it'll be transparent and you can see reality through it. So let me just go through and I'll do the rest of them here. I'll just do a little time lapse. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get rid of some of the objects in the room. Uh, so I'm just gonna get rid of this desk over here. Just go delete, get rid of this bookshelf, delete, and we'll get rid of a couple of the other objects as well. Actually, you know what? I might leave that bookshelf back in there. Let's just change the color of that. Cool. Let's get rid of these items. All right, I'm simply going to go file, save the studio and close. And we now have our new object. I'm now going to say I want this to be eight feet tall and put zero for the altitude. So that way it's on the ground plane. So once you have the room into the studio, we can uh, each one of these tiles equals a foot. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So now you know the size of objects when you place them and how wide they're going to be. So you could actually plan out a room, right? So in this case, I'm going to go to Sketchfab. I'm just going to grab a couch. And it could be any one of these, right? So you, you could do how you want your room to look. Or if you had the model from the manufacturer, you can see if it was actually going to fit. In this case, we're designing, uh, we're, we're replacing reality uh, totally. So I'm just going to grab the uh, uh, fun little couch I grabbed earlier. I'm just going to go import. So if you know the height of the couch, the width of the model will fall into place. Uh, if you had the actual model for something that you replace in, in, in reality. So in this case, I'm just going to move this couch over here. And if you see it going through the wall, you know you're going into the, uh, so you can easily place objects. It's totally what you see is what you get. So if you're going through an object, you can see it happen. So we just want to place it right against the wall as tight as we can. And there we go. Okay. So I could also change the size of this couch easily enough. So I can just go want this couch to be uh, 
and zero on the ground. And of course, you could use the spring in the middle to scale it up equally as well, right? You can also go undo over here if you don't remember exactly what you had. Nice and easy, nice and fast. Uh, let's just quickly go grab uh, the image for the floor. So let's go image. Let's go select file. And we can grab whatever texture you may want. In this case, I'm just going to grab this wood floor. I'm going to go upload. And I'm simply going to scale it up to match the room. And I'm going to rotate it around. So I want the pattern to go that way. Okay. So now I'm just going to go grab a few more objects. I'm just going to grab a desk. Grab a cyberpunk one. I used that one before as well. Once it's in the environment, just place it where you want it to be. I believe that's four feet tall and uh, 4.5. Zero. And we'll place it over here, right against the wall. Perfect. Nice and centered with the couch. Good viewing, optimal viewing. And you can go around and add knickknacks. I'll just add one just as an example. So let's go back. Let's go animate it. Let's go robot. Let's grab this one and see what it does. Let's just place the robot over here. And we'll put it up on top of the shelf. Now, obviously, you might want something static so that will loop properly, right? But it looks fun enough. And we'll just add one more element. We'll just go uh, painting. We'll just grab the Mona Lisa. We'll just place it over on the wall. All right, as you can see, there's a lot more elements than there was a few seconds ago. What happened was, when I was doing the video editing uh, the other day, I wasn't very happy with the time lapse on this particular section. It was a little too flashy. And I didn't want to cause anybody any with any, any photosensitive uh, elements. So I just decided to reshoot it and talk about what I did. So I replaced the floor texture from wood. And replacing textures is as easy as going to highlighting the actual objects. So in this case, I've highlighted it. And I can go change the asset. I can go select file. And I can go back and just quickly upload replace the texture. Every element in the scene is like that, okay? So you can just, I'm just going to undo that. Uh, but any object you grab, so if I grab this robot over here, I can just go uh, change asset, and then I can just select another asset. That's uh, that's we made it that way so that once you get something in position, you don't want to have, to have something come back to the center and have to remove it around. Leave assets in place, even the text, right? So if I if I come over here and go uh, tap on place, I can change that any object that we've uh, designed inside the studio. Uh, these are just PNGs. I've just added PNGs to the wall. Uh, and down here, we have I've added sound. <clears throat> so this 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 will never show you can you can place it, the sound around wherever you want. It's handy because it has elements of spatial audio for uh, for if you're using iOS and we have implemented Android. Just we're going to be making it a lot better over time here in the next little bit. Uh, so you can just leave it there. It's not going to show in the scene. So now let's see what we've done. Let's go save and uh, do this. All right, now the uh, choose your packages come up. You can go create or upgrade. In this case, we're just going to leave it on free. Yes, this entire thing can be created for free in our studio. So let's just go check out. All right, time to scan the QR code. Well, it's loading there. I just want to talk about something. See this arrow on the ground? that represents the initial starting pose that's it's aiming at you so or so you, when you design a, an element uh think about how the user might activate it in front of them and that's how they're going to see it first so that's that arrow denotes where you're standing so when i place this the place your stuff and uh place more stuff and that robot will be right in front of me as i'm looking so uh this is slam based this is not grabbing the room okay so you might have to just line it up a little bit we do have point cloud implementation coming but it doesn't make sense on a browser yet. And WebXR is going to open up a lot more things that are coming. I just want to put that shout out there just to let you guys that watch this in case people think they might want to know what's coming. And that's an element that we will be bringing in the future. But right now, it, it, it's slam base, and you just have to rotate it in the position. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to move it to basically match up the... Uh, 
door. Around there we go. And here we have room replacement. So a quick, easy way to replace reality, to be able to do this for home staging, to be able to do this for this kind of elements, especially when pass-through devices come into play down the road, uh, you're able to walk into your room and if you don't like your room, skin it, right? Or, heck, you could just use the, uh, like I said before, I think I'm in this tutorial even, you could just place regular furniture and elements in an empty room and get a floor plan. You don't even have to use bring it in the air. You could just use Worldcast as a, because it is to scale. And I just want to talk about one more thing before I sign off here. Uh, these grids, as I, as I was mentioning, uh, we have this set to in, in, in feet right now. Of course, you could use meters, inches, and uh, and centimeters. Okay. Uh, all you have to do is go, when you go to properties, if I change this over to like uh, inches, feet, centimeters, and meters, the unit will the uh, square will become that unit. So if you had something sent to 120 inches at 10, that would be 10 feet, 120 inches, uh, each square would be an inch, all right? That would, that would help you if you were designing a desktop scenario or something that was, you know, as you get smaller, the more precise, maybe you want an object beside another object to be exactly the distance between the two, especially equal to the distance in reality as well. So that's how easy it is to create uh, using Polycam, the power of Worldcast, with Sketchfab integration, you can, of course, upload your own models uh, as well. So we always caution about the data in the bottom corner. Uh, just keep an eye on that. Just make sure your experience, you know, most of these experiences are probably going to be done at home on, on uh, Wi-Fi anyway. But always be aware of, of the end user as well. If you're, if you're sharing something, uh, regardless if it's just room replacement or just objects or any of our elements in our studio, Printcast for print, Showcast for planes, uh, Slam, and geocast or geospatial always keep in mind where the end result might be for people that might be experiencing it beyond yourself right so make sure it's accessible easy to use and we've done the best we can to make it uh, easy to create and easy to consume and it's up to you now to be creative disrupt i can't wait to see what you create